Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be doing a news slash updates video. Starting off with the Fat Shark HDOs. So when I first saw the announcement of the HDO, I was really excited because for ages I've been saying that OLED needs to be in FPV goggles. And I supported all of the decisions that they made with these goggles, such as the slightly smaller field of view and the DVR being the same, etc. And seeing as I'm not seen as one of the bigger RC channels, I knew that they weren't going to send me a pair for review. So I thought it would be a really nice treat to buy some myself. And I went out flying with them and I was surprised to see that I could barely use them because there is a lot of sun around here at the moment and they've changed the material of the casing from the initial versions that were sent out. So I've always been an advocate of Fat Shark because their customer service has always been great over the years. But I can't express how disappointed I've been with this buying experience. So yeah, there's been a problem at the factory or something like that. And they gave me the option to send them in and have the casing replaced. Or they are going to send the shells directly to me so I've gone with that option because I've already had them for three weeks and you know I can't use them and you know, perhaps I can make a video on how to do it or something but I'll flash some images up for you because you know the HDOs against a energy saving light bulb had loads of light leakage it was through the front of the goggles and it made it through the back and it was also leaking light through the eyepieces as well, you know, so if you've got a narrow IPD then you just get like an orange orb around the image and you know it's really distracting and then if I compare that to the HD3s then it doesn't have that problem and it sucks and that's all I can say about it you know this is a big screw up I think and it's disappointing and after spending 434 pounds on them which is like nearly what six hundred dollars I would expect better so, while on the subject of goggles that don't cost $600, I have a little update regarding the Ishin EV200Ds. Now, I found a problem with the DVR in my testing, and PAL recordings were only saving at 20 frames per second, and they've sent me an updated firmware, and that has fixed the problem. So, PAL now records at 25 frames per second, and NTSC records at 30 frames per second. And it was really easy to do the update, actually, which bodes well. They gave me a file to put on the micro SD card, and then it just did its own thing. I powered the goggles up, and there was a, just a few beeps, and it updated. Now, I've been trying to get more information off them, such as if they are going to improve the faceplate and sort out the cropping that was there in NTSC, but they seem to be keeping that info close to their chest, so that's all that I have for the moment. Next, I want to talk about some things that are going to be coming up on the channel. So, I've received the Rotoriot flight controller from Rotoriot, obviously. And it's an F4 flight controller made in conjunction with DYS. And it's what I'm testing at the moment. So, look out for that one. Oh, just quickly, I want to mention something that I said about the x light that I got wrong in my review. Now, I said when you plug it into the computer and use it as a joystick controller for a simulator or whatever, the mapping was slightly different. The the X9D and that's not true it's because Ishin had used a strange channel map for the wizard so it came as part of an RTF and I just wanted to clear that one up so the mapping is the same as the Tyrannis and I think the X lights on sale now actually so I'm sure they will be selling well Next is some news from Runcam. So they have eventually decided to release the Micro Swift V3 with the smaller M8 lens. Now, originally, they told me that they were only releasing the V3 as a M12 version, and I thought that was a mistake. So they've backpedaled, and you can now buy it in the Micro M8 version. But I've already done a review on the prototype, so I'm not going to do another video on it. It's just a mention that you can get it in the smaller form factor. And while on the subject of Runcam, I've been sent two new Speedybee products. So Speedybee is an offshoot of Runcam. I think the reason why they have separated the name is that they are branching out into products that are less 
camera related so I've come up with a different name. So here I have got the TX500 which is a 20 by 20 500 milliwatt switching VTX that uses the Tramp protocol and it's using a MMCX connector and a JST cable for your soldering but there's also some breakout pads as well and it looks like it's got a 5 volt out and an onboard microphone so I'll have to find a microcopter to stick that in and give it a go so it's pretty good really because they are usually limited to around about 200 milliwatts for the micro size so apparently you know this one will do up to 500 they've also sent me their new VTX DVR which is a 30 by 30 board and it's also a switching VTX up to 600 milliwatt this time and it's got a standard definition DVR built into it which is a thing that's becoming popular at the moment it's using the tramp protocol again and it's also got an MMCX connector but as you can see there's no capacitors on here like the Ishim one had so you will lose your footage if the battery is pulled but there's some great innovation coming from SpeedyB or Runcam and you know I'll look forward to checking both of these out Next is something completely different. Now, I haven't really checked out many cameras lately, and that's been because the Session 5 has been really hard to beat. And I think the Session 5 is slowly going to start to go out of circulation as they've discontinued it. And I think we'll need some other options. And I know a lot of people are switching to the GoPro 6, and maybe that is the best option. But here I've got the Firefly 8SE, and it's a 4K camera and it's got a touch screen. I think it's waterproof as well. And apparently it does super view, so I'll let you know if it's actually super view. And moving on, and I've been sent a new SPC Maker model. This is the 95EP and it's a brushless one cell micro. Now I'm usually pretty cautious about SPC Maker because they've had a couple of shaky models in the past, but you know, the one cell brushless market is pretty niche, so I thought I'd check it out, and it looks pretty smart. So recently I've been talking a lot about freestyle on the channel and the need for getting the props out of the shot to get better footage, and HLRC has sent me their new all-in-one flight controller, so this is the HLRC F4 V6 Pro and it's got a built-in switching VTX up to 600 milliwatt with smart audio and it also acts as a power distribution board and I'm going to use it with their 32-bit T-Rex 35 amp ESCs and I want to attempt to build a fairly lightweightish freestyle build and for the frame I was thinking of either using the Schizo Nova frame or the Halo RC Archon frame that I've had for a while. Now I think the Schizo frame will still slightly get the props in shots, so I'm edging towards the Archon. Or if you guys know of any killer freestyle frames that won't have the props in the GoPro footage, then leave a comment in the below and I'll check that out. And staying on the subject of freestyle, I've talked about it before, but I'm going to be updating my Impulse RC Alien with the Mr. Steel PDB and the KISS V2 flight controller. And lastly, Drone Junkie has sent me their Woover kit, which I think turns a tiny whoop into a hovercraft type thing. Now, I thought you guys were sending all of the gear, but this is just the kit, so you'll need a, a tiny whoop, so I'm going to have to go and dig one out to get this going, but I want to have a go at it at some point. So if you are interested in any of these products, I'll link them in the below. And once again, thanks to everyone who has signed up to Patreon. It's really helping me to afford to do this stuff and I better get cracking hadn't I so as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers